Okay, we're standing just upstream of the Geyserville Bridge on the Russian River. And uh, to the southeast over here is where the uh, Geyserville Bridge is. This was reconstructed in 2007 after it failed in 2006. And what's interesting about this spot is this has been an area where there's been a lot of erosion toward this bank, the west bank that we're standing on. Um, just over the last couple of weeks, about 130 feet of bank has been lost here. And over the past five years, it's probably closer to 200 some feet. And the reason is, if you look across the channel, is that the bar on the other side of the channel has built up upwards of 14, 15 feet since 15 years ago. The channel used to be actually over at that line of trees on the other side and used to have a straight trajectory into the bridge opening. So what's happened over time is this bar is built up. You can see it's, uh, I think this last storm didn't even get this top of this bar wet, but it was very effective in, um, in eroding this bank. And so if you look back 15, 20 years, when these bars were skimmed, we had a lot of flows that were in this range of 25,000 cubic feet per second that didn't cause any erosion. But now that we have these bars built up, that bar is acting more like a point bar of a meandering stream. And you can really see that bar, its shape and the shape of the channel, this long arcuate meander loop indicates this change has occurred from a low alternate bar to a point bar system. So the reason why this bank eroded is during high flow some time ago, the bar got built up with very coarse material. If you look across there, you'll see a lot of cobble, a lot of bouldery size sediment over on top of that bar. Now this river can't get around it, so it's coming around the side into the soft bank, and that's what it's eroding right here at this bank. Another interesting thing is if you look at the bridge, it's opening from the edge of this rock to the other side is about one half of the original width of the channel. But where I'm standing right now used to be part of the active channel. And if you look over at the roadway fill, it's clearly blocking. You see the top of the road and the land at the bottom. It's blocking the original floodplain. So part of the history of this area is that the river has incised or downcut about six or eight feet due to things like bridges, gravel mining, and also the encroachment of agricultural land filling in the riverbed. And it went from a wide meandering channel to a narrow straight channel. And so now, um, since gravel mining has decreased, it's becoming more of its natural channel, a wide, shallow channel, large meanders such as the one upstream. And of all the evidence of what the tendency of a river is, its natural tendency, this shows it beautifully with a point bar, a very regularly shaped channel width, and a strong arcuate meander. And so we're seeing the point bar building pushing the channel this way, and the outside bank retreating. Um, this is a much less efficient system in moving coarse sediment than the one that was here 15 years ago, which was straighter. Uh, as that efficiency decreases, you risk having what's called an avulsion in a large flood event. That is, this thing gets so meandery, so inefficient at in moving all the rocks, that it actually plugs up and the flow goes up over bank and goes goes either side. It just finds a, a quicker path. And if that were to happen, it would of course wipe out any kind of vineyard that was in the way. Um, another thing that's very interesting about this bank is it shows what happens when we lose our riparian cover on the bank. If you look upstream, now that's an armored bank up there with all those large trees and everything. That's all rock riprap. But look how lush it is. I mean, it's the winter right now, so we don't have leaves, but that's a very dense uh, well-vegetated surface. So that was done just with rock. There's probably much more better ways to do it, but we could actually rebuild this bank with a low bench and a lot of vegetation and some some logs that make really great aquatic and riparian habitat at the edge of the river, which is very uh, valuable, versus emergency repairs where we wait until the last minute and a million and a half dollars is spent on throwing a bunch of rock at it. And this has very low habitat value. Uh, as it is right now. It might grow into what we see upstream, but I kind of doubt it because it's very steep and very porous. It's going to be hard for vegetation to get established in there.
Um, so we're on top of the uh, Geyserville Bridge, we're on the west abutment. And so if you look out, you can really get a good view of what's happened uh, through time. Um, if you look on the left or the right side of the channel here, you'll see these lines of kind of reddish willows that bend around. And that marks the location of the channel 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, it went from being kind of in the middle of this bar to gradually moving over and meandering the way it looks right now. So over the past, oh, 15 years, this thing has traveled probably 300 feet to the west and taken out a lot of this vineyard and also resulted in the emergency repair of the rock that was placed here by Caltrans to save the bridge. So this is the result of this bar building up. And again, that's come up about 12, 15 feet. You can see the buried willows out, or cottonwoods out in the middle. The gravel keeps building and building and building. And when the flow has to get around that obstruction, it tends to eat the, the banks that are finer and erodible. So this one of the solutions for this bank is to build a uh, floodplain bench. And that would be to take some of this large rock and use it as tow protection, like get it down at the lowest end of the channel and then build a bench about the elevation of where these willows are growing, these reddish kind of plants, and build a, maybe a 10, 20 foot wide bench and then slope it up to the land. So you would incorporate logs and vegetation in that as well as some boulders and make it irregular. And that would make really great habitat, plus it would slow down or stop the erosion problem. It would save the property and save the bridge. So you look at the low flow channel right now, see how it slopes around here, the, the water surface slope? And it's moving pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now take a look at the top of that bar. And you can see how flat it is going upstream. It's yeah. considerably flatter than what we see right now, this, this channel, right? Yeah. So what it shows you is the, um, when the flows are really big, this bridge actually constricts flow to where it causes what's called a backwater, where it flattens the water surface. And all that bed load, all that coarse gravel coming into that reach from up upstream of that bar and actually a little bit further, kind of hits this pond of water formed by the bridge and it dumps it out. In the, and and that, that flatness of that bar shows you what the, the slope of the water surface was during the backwater. So it looks like it's about, you know, half of a, half or less the slope of what's uh, what's occurring in this lower flow, when the bridge doesn't affect the flow that much. Looks like there's some reverse flowing going on here too. Well, there's an eddy. Mm -hmm. It's got a lot of flow that comes in here, and then this big area opens up just past where this bar is. It opens up on the left, and you do have a little bit of water streaming through, but there's a there's kind of a vacant space, so it forms a big eddy. And if you were going to fish here, you'd probably want to drop your line right along that fence right there, because that's probably where the big fish are hanging out, looking for food going by.